In this video, we're going to tell you exactly how to survive getting through your kid's addiction and come out the other side and still have friendships. Because if you don't know how to handle this with your friends and extended family, you're probably going to come out the other side pretty much lonely. hating lonely and mad the universe. I'm Amber Hollingsworth and this is Campbell Manning and every day we help families survive this crisis. So <laughs> I don't even remember exactly where I was in this. I think my son had gone to treatment. Okay. Um, pretty sure he'd gone. But it's on the treadmill and it was right in front of the window. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking out the window and hating everyone I saw at that I didn't YMCA. even know at the Y. So right. you can see people like walking in yeah. or whatever. Okay. So if I saw an old couple, older couple, I'd be furious because I didn't think that their grandchildren were struggling with addiction. Mm -hmm. If I saw a young couple with little tiny children, I was mad because I thought their children will never grow up to be addicts. If I saw a teenager, I was furious because they're not an addict. <laughs> and I just, I was, I remember being so angry at everyone because I was so lonely because mm -hmm. I really hadn't disclosed much of what was happening mm -hmm. to anyone. Because you were just hiding it. It's like a secret. So this was before treatment. Before treatment. It was before treatment because okay. I had told my best friend by the time he went okay. to treatment. Yeah. Otherwise known as Campbell's emo phase. Did you like <laughs> wear hoodies and like black? No, Honestly, but I was... But you were emo on the inside. I was emo on the inside. I was not eating much. I was not even reading novels. I was not doing anything fun. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You called it being in the trough. In the trough. Now, you pretty much told me you didn't want to get out the trough. That's You're like, I mean, I'm not coming out. Like, but, you can't get me out. But I remember you <laughs> asked me why, and mm -hmm. I remember saying, because I'm so low... Mm -hmm. That if I just stay down here by depriving myself and being angry at the world, then when the next bad thing happens, when you know I get another call from the police or he, whatever, it won't bother me. It's not. It's because not I'm like, already so. You're not gonna crash out. Down, just so down there, and you were like, nope. There's always further to fall. Oh yeah, I say that kind of thinking, that sort of like don't get your hopes up thinking is just a mind trick that's about as effective as when I set my clock ahead in my car. Which and you know work. how effective that is, right? <laughs> because She's never on time. You tell yourself, like, if I don't get my feelings up or if I don't, like, expect this to work, that I won't get let down. But trust me, you get just as let down. All you do is rob yourself of any joy in the meantime. Well, and what I tell parents is if you do that, then you're going to have an empty battery for when the bad news comes. But if you'll, oh, if you'll be able to, you know, feed your soul, mm -hmm. at least do some of your hobbies, at least keep in contact with some friends... And do something even if it's not full throttle joy you'll still have enough battery left to tolerate what's coming that's a really good point mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that but it's hard because you don't want to it's hard you, you just know. want to crawl in a hole you just want to sleep mm -hmm. All right so um the idea for this video actually came from one of the families they they sent us an email and said hey do y'all ever talk about this like what to do with your friends like the way your friends um, a lot of people feel like their friends like reject them or don't know how to deal with it and their their relationships just fall apart and a lot of them do and so we got that recommendation from someone and i was like oh yeah like we talk about that all the time so it was a good video right like, recommendation right. and i can remember particularly you were recommending to me that i a friend had reached out two friends had reached out and wanted me to have lunch with them and i didn't want to because they had, I felt, dropped me. Mm -hmm. um, this was like a couple of years later, and I felt they had dropped me. Um, like they just quit talking to you, they yeah. didn't have anything to do with you. Right, And but you you said you really need to go, and I did, and it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. One of those friends I haven't seen socially since, um, but the other I've seen a lot. What were you thinking that they were thinking? To be honest, at that point, I didn't care what they were thinking. I was just mad at them because they hadn't supported me. And they knew darn well what had happened because by this time he was had been gone for a long time. What did you need for them to do? Because I, that's what I was telling you is that your friends don't know what to do. And a lot of times it's not because they intentionally not support you. It's almost like they don't want to bring oh, it up because no. they don't want to make you feel bad or well, embarrassed. Well, they had kids or... the same ages as mine. Mm -hmm. So I think they, 
felt embarrassed. One of them, I think, seriously thought my kids would never do this, and so she's the one I didn't see again. Mm -hmm. The other one, I think, just didn't know what to say. Right. And because I had isolated so much, she just was, I maybe, to be honest, was probably honoring my isolation. But, I, what I wish she had done is just say, hey, I'm sorry, I heard this has happened to you guys, and I don't know what to say, but I'm sorry. I, that's what I wish. And I remember actually thinking that because even though I'm a counselor, maybe it's because I'm a counselor. Like, I don't get in anybody's business that doesn't want me in it. Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. And it's not even because I don't care. It's more of a respectfulness. And it could have been that. But some people, like, you know, they deal with that by coming towards you. And some people are trying to just, like, give you your space. But people don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. And so they either do nothing, which is the wrong thing, but better than giving you really bad advice or really mm -hmm. judgmental advice because that happens a lot. Our clients talk about that all the time. They don't want to tell their sister because she'll judge them or they don't want to tell their aunt because she's kind of mean. Because if I was you, I'd just kick them out. Oh, you should totally I'd have done that. just take their car from them. Like, you need to show them. You get advice like that. Yes. Right. Right. Or you get the look. Yeah. The judgment. The judgment look. look. And if you're watching this video, you know that none of those things would have worked anyway. Oh yeah, you tried all that. Yeah. You done you ran through all that or you wouldn't be watching our video. Exactly. Right. That's the regular stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the ticket is to first of all work through your own shame so that you you're not held in that isolation. Because that's what that's about, is I'm mm -hmm. just too embarrassed and depressed to think about this. And then realize it's a disease mm -hmm. and then pick a few trusted people and just say we're struggling you're just gonna have to like channel yeah. your renee brown and be a little vulnerable mm -hmm. oh yeah it's tough yeah, it's tough yeah but when i finally did it with my very best friend um because she was like you're dogging me you're not answering my phone calls i know something's up and i'm not gonna stop calling mm -hmm. and so finally i was like you're right, I'm dogging you, and here's what's happened. And she, there was silence, and then she said, I'm so sorry, Campbell. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Aww. And I was like, that's what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> so this video is all about when to tell, mm -hmm. who to tell, and what to tell. Because I like the way you said, like, you tell your clients, like, don't be putting the blimp up over your house announcing it, because that's not helpful no, either. you don't need to get a t-shirt that says, hey, I'm the mother of an addict. Right. That's not going to work. Yeah, until they're like in recovery. Oh, and then you do it with then pride. Then you can, yeah. Like the one over, I have the Goodyear blimp permanently over my house. <laughs> you definitely it's do. It's very expensive. <laughs> do you know how much a blimp costs? <laughs> but, so it's, it's, you know, how do you decide when to tell it? Because you, when we were talking about this, you said you felt like that's probably the most important factor. I think that you have to decide to tell it when you can tolerate it, but when you also realize that you are going into the dark hole. Um, because... It, it ties directly in with also we can't get the attic clean until we get the parents mm -hmm. to get out of their part of the disease, which is shame and isolation. So I think when you realize you're really just lonely and tired, right. it's, it's your, your past where you should do it. A lot of people, I think one of the ways to know that you're going to the dark place, into the trough, is when you're having those like... I hate everyone thoughts like I get a lot of this like mm -hmm. you know you start getting graduation invitations in the mail oh the prom Just, oh graduation you know Christmas people. cards that talk about all the fantastic things that are happening and inside you're just seething you're Screw just thinking you. like mean thoughts like mm -hmm. if that's going on you you probably need to get a friend yeah that's yeah. a that's a really good thing is mm -hmm. when you start to feel your your own emotions going down to that side with other people's news mm -hmm. yeah or when you and just, when you realize you've only talked to your husband in the last two months and your husband and you're not in agreement about the issue either then you're like you know if i've only talked to my husband for two months i'm in deep trouble yeah because a lot of times with the spouses like one wants to talk about it all the time and one doesn't want to talk about it at oh. all mm -hmm. and so then there becomes this tension there right yeah so when to tell it is when you feel yourself going into the draw mm -hmm. who to tell it to to me, I think, I personally think the who is probably. The who the is important. pivotal. I mean, we talked about this earlier. I don't think you should tell anyone that you know you're going to get judgment or negative comments or that you know will impact your child in the future poorly. So. Like, give me an example of that. Well, I guess it's sort of the details, like, you know, with my father, I didn't give the details of what was going on because it involved some stealing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want 
my father to judge my child when I knew the addiction had done the stealing. Right. So it was kind of just me making a judgment call. But I did tell my father we had a problem. Right. Um, and he responded beautifully, mm -hmm. which surprised me totally. Well, you were saying earlier, like, and I see this a lot, and you see this even more than I do, but um, the parents don't want to tell their parents, the Especially grandparents. Especially if they're elderly because they don't want the grandparent to have anxiety or heart problems. Or, But I think you made the good point that you don't want to tell... I don't recommend you tell anyone that's going to start getting on you. Like, yeah. how is it? Well, how is he today? How is he today? How is he today? Or I trying remember, to tell you what to do. I remember there's a woman in family group who said that she finally had to say, because her mother was hounding, hounding, and she mm -hmm. finally said, you know, Mom, I'm really tired of talking about how he is. I'd like for you to ask how I am. Ooh. And I thought, well, that was a mm. salient point. Man, that's and but the mom, soul But right the mom there. heard her. Right. She did it. Right. Like she, mom was like re really redirected super nicely. Mm -hmm. So I think just enough people that you have a trusted group of people that you can talk to about it because you don't want to burden one person with every necessary detail, but you also don't want to have to bring people back up to speed. You want to you wanna have two or three people two or three maybe people. that you really trust that you're not going to feel like are going to be judging you or, you know thinking critical thoughts when you're out there and that sort of thing. But I do, this I'll really caution you, be, think of this through carefully because I, I remember telling someone I thought would be just so in my corner and she said that probably the most shockingly judgmental, rude comment I've heard. What was it? Well, I'm glad it's your children because my children would never do that. No, I'm sorry it's your children, but my children would never do that. Shut your mouth. No. That's probably like the worst thing you can it say. It was bad. That's bad. It was bad. Oh, my. I, didn't, I don't think I even knew that. Right. So, I always tell people, be prepared. If it goes well, wonderful. If it doesn't go well, don't let it ruin your week, day, month, because it's on them. Mm -hmm. And if they say the wrong thing, it's because they're so uncomfortable with the topic mm -hmm. and they're so uneducated about the topic and they're so inexperienced mm -hmm. about the topic. And I think in, instead of thinking they're just toads or <laughs> being malicious, if you can look at it from that way. They just don't know better. They just don't know better. They just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like when someone dies and people say it's for a reason and you're thinking, really? Right. So. Yeah. People just don't know what to do sometimes. And then you just have to, with the who, you have to just be aware that it could not go well and just find another who. Because mm -hmm. I'm the one that usually sees, you know, the addict and the alcoholic, mm -hmm. <laughs> the one in big trouble. And they have a lot of problem because they feel like their parents or whoever it is is telling everybody in the world all their business. And then that causes a lot of conflict there. Um, I don't think you should not tell anyone for that reason. Because I'll tell my client. I'll say, well, they got to have their support yeah, too. Like, they've they got to have somebody to lean on. That's not yeah. about you. That's about them. And you'd be surprised that they're actually not. Right. Which I think is one of the reasons parent group works so well is that that gives a place to talk about it if you haven't. And right. it's, a, it's a practice. Right. And the other thing I think is super great about parent groups is you can walk in there and you can look around the room and you can see all these, like, lovely parents and you're looking at your mirror like nah, i know they are good parents like mm -hmm. and look at them like they're so smart and like they got it together and it really helps you to wrap your head around the fact that it's not some parenting thing this that you did a wrong moral, a moral flaw in you right, right. i think it helps because that's what people say in here like i can't agree i saw all these like normal mm -hmm. people I'm like i know someone told me that today they said the first time they came to our parent group they were like everybody was so dressed so well dressed and smiling and they were like did you say, what were you expecting? Yeah. They were like a <laughs> bunch of poor people who, you know, have bad children. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not what we are. Not who not who drug addicts are. And not who their parents are. I'm not a hope for families. Not a hope for families. <laughs> okay. And then the what. So that kind of comes into the what. I kind of go with less is more. I, I use the term and recommend a lot to say struggling with some substance abuse or struggling with addiction instead of taking this, doing this. I, the, the details don't really matter because you want the support for your side of the struggle. Mm -hmm. You don't want advice about the disease. You don't want advice about your child's behavior. You want support. You want mm -hmm. someone to say, let's go get a cup of coffee or gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll be over in 15 minutes. So I, I think that's a really good point. It's kind of like you said, like the person that said to their mother or whatever, mm -hmm. like 
if the more you talk about the person and what they're doing, the more judgment and critic comments. Yeah, well, the more even if it's not judgment, the more that person's gonna try to give you advice. Yes, yeah, that's a good. Point. And a lot of times that's just frustrating. Mm -hmm. But the more you just talk about like how you feel, I'm you know I'm like so sad or I'm devastated or I'm in the trough or I'm thinking mean thoughts about people like mm -hmm. talking to me about that, then they'll that'll sort of direct them about what that's, you need. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's really you know it's like the blog I wrote. You know, it was called salty because. I find most parents I see, and I found myself sad, angry, lonely, tired, and yearning for things to be different. Mm -hmm. And so if you can apply any of those things to your friend, then they can react to those things because those are human emotions that they can relate, relate to. to, whether they can relate to addiction or not, and then you get the support you need. Yeah, and that's what you need is the friend. Right. The friend part, right? Yeah, that's all you need. Right. You can find a counselor. Right. Right. Two good ones. Two good ones. Right here. And if you're interested and you want to know just exactly how crazy Campbell got, how far in the trough she went, then you can check out her video, Ooh. which is also on our YouTube channel, <laughs> where you can get more of the gory details. And don't do it. She wasn't always this delightful, <laughs> happy <laughs> no. trough of wisdom. No, it was It was dark. It's dark time. Can I tell about the part that something bad happened and Frank, that's Campbell's husband, called me and we had to do rock, paper, scissors oh, about who yeah. had to call you. Mm -hmm. That's how dark, like we were fighting over who had to tell you. We were like, oh, not me, not me, not me. I lost. Frank is good like that. Well, you know when your counselor calls you when you're on a business trip and when you go up to break in the hotel room, it says, Hey, Campbell, it's Amber. <laughs> Just, you know, um, if you could, like, I don't know, maybe return my call today. And I was like, well, <laughs> she's not calling to say how Chicago. <laughs> so I was already girded up. Yeah. And then I didn't disappoint you. But there's not a way to leave a message. No, there's not. There's no good way to do it. No. All right. Anything else? Any other words of wisdom? Just don't be embarrassed. It's not your fault. Your kid's not a bad kid. Mm -hmm. Don't. It's not. Don't feed the shame of this because that's bad for them as well as you, and it just keeps this your cycle of troughness or whatever you want to call it going. You cannot make someone into a drug addict. Mm -hmm. So I can promise you, whatever's going on isn't your fault. But I will tell you, you can definitely make it worse, and you can definitely make it go on longer. And if you don't want to do that, then you better watch. Our videos. Yeah. Because we'll tell you how not to do that. It's not your fault, but most parents do get sucked into it and they... They propagate it by their... They make their, it go on longer than it really had to. By doing what parents would traditionally do, which is yell, punish, scream, and it doesn't work. Yeah, you got to shift out of parent mode and into some other kind of different, what Campbell calls non-intuitive parenting. Right. Mm -hmm. If you or a loved one has a drug or alcohol problem and you don't want to waste a lot of time and money doing all the wrong things, save yourself the heartache. Subscribe to this channel and I'll make sure you're always five steps ahead of addiction.